Hello everyone, this is Jake Mickelson, the Quality Improvement Education Manager in the Department of Radiology at Stanford University. And welcome today to the Radiology Improvement Team Education Program. Today's topic is on statistical process control. In today's topic, we're going to put our cowboy hats on and use the example of the cattle drive to help us understand this concept. So, I guess in other words, hop on your horse and here we go. So I was raised in a little place called Idaho on a horse ranch and every so often I'd have the opportunity to participate in a cattle drive. And a cattle drive is basically moving a large number of cattle from one place to another. And it's usually a pretty long distance. And as the cowboy, I remember when I first started going on cattle drives, the first thing I'd want to do is I'd see the cattle going along the trail and as soon as I'd see one go off path, I'd react and hurry and get that cow back to where it needs to be. And another one would go off path, and I'd react and hurry and get that one back. And this would happen over and over again, me trying to keep the cattle on the path. And it was so hard, I couldn't keep them on the path. And even though I made sure I responded to each and every one, it just couldn't keep them on the path. So this happened over and over again until a point came where I, after about an hour of doing this, that my horse and myself decided to head back to the barn because this was too hard. And then the cattle just continued on their merry way. So the question I had at hand was, how do I know whether my cattle are changing course or simply wandering? Because if they're changing course, then I need to react. I need to see what's going on and help them stay on the path. But if they're simply wandering, maybe I can just leave them alone and let them continue forward in this cattle drive. So a good cowboy, when they take a look at a cattle drive, they'll watch the cattle go and they'll start to see that they stay within a certain range. And after they see that, they'll set something, they'll, they'll set some boundaries around the cattle. And as they set these boundaries, they'll then state, okay, if a cow stays within these boundaries, then I know it's probably still on the same course. I don't need to intervene. So what's helpful about this is that when a cow does fall outside of the boundaries, the cowboy can react and see what happened. So this is so much better than my approach because my approach was reacting to every single one of these. But a good cowboy will set these boundaries and only react when something falls outside of the boundaries. So this is what I call cowboy logic number one. There's another rule they follow on cattle drives which is also really helpful. And that is that when the cattle are going about their cattle drive, a cowboy will only respond when he sees a group of cattle that are off course. When he starts to see a group of cattle here, that's when he'll respond and start pushing them back into the right course. And then the cattle will continue on. This is what I call cowboy logic number two. Using these two pieces of logic, a cowboy can be much more successful in a cattle drive and not get worn out, with, worn out within the first hour, kind of like I did. Let's look at a real cattle drive and see how it actually works. So the famous large cattle drives were actually done back in the early or late 1800s. And here are the stats. They used to move 2,000 head of cattle, right around 500 miles, doing about 15 miles a day, and they could do it with only 10 cowboys. This to me is incredible. Having been on a cattle drive myself, it, it's a lot of work. So for them to be able to do it with 10 cowboys, they had to really apply those principles because they had limited resources moving this large number of cattle from one place to another. So how does cowboy logic equate to statistical process control? When we, when we were talking about the cattle drive, we asked, how do I know whether my cattle are changing course or simply wandering? Statistical process control, we're asking the question, how do I know whether my data represents an actual change in the process or just random variation? So let's take a look at it. So now we see we've got a graph here and the cattle are going along a certain destination and it looks like their mean or their average is about right here if you look at the graph. So if this was a run chart, here's our mean and the cattle represent all the data points falling above and below that mean. So like cowboy logic number one stated, we set boundaries. Well in statistical process control we call those control limits and you can equate those using statistics and I'm not going to explain how to do that here if you want to set control limits around your run chart, go ahead and contact your local QIA person and they can help you do that. 
So remember in logic number one, the cowboy learned to respond only when something fell outside of the boundaries. And in statistical process control, it's the same thing. You can set these control limits, and so when a point does fall outside the boundaries, then you can ask, why did this happen? What can we learn from it? Many solutions are brought forth in a project by looking at those points that fall outside of the control limits. You can learn a lot from them. So now let's move on to cowboy logic number two. So in this one, once again, we have the cattle here representing our different da data points, and then our average or our mean shown here. So let's take the example of wait time. Let's say we wish to decrease our wait time for a certain project. So currently, we could say our current process has a mean of 20 minutes, represented here. Now, if we look at the voice of the process, and if we just told someone the mean of our process is 20 minutes, is that being true to really what the process is doing? Not exactly. The voice of the process includes the mean and also the variation. So if we really wanted to state to someone what our process was doing, we'd say our process has a mean of 20 minutes with a variation of plus or minus five minutes. And then like cowboy logic number two showed, when we have a group of consecutive points that are above or below the mean, then some, some change has occurred. And that's when we can create a new mean to our process. So now we can say that we have changed the process. In statistical process control, it states that if you have a group of eight or more consecutive points above or below the mean, then you've probably changed your process. So now we can state our new process having a mean of 13 and a variation of plus or minus two. So in this example, we've actually won in two ways. We've decreased our average wait time or our mean from 20 to 13, and we've also decreased our variation, which is fantastic. Because if you think about the customer or the patient who's experiencing these wait times, you now have a more consistent wait time, right around 13 minutes. Another important thing to remember about statistical process control is when you're creating your run chart, you're going to set a goal. And you're going to say, we want to reach this 13 minute mean by April 1st, for example. Well, if you really want to accomplish that goal, then you need to start achieving that goal way back in February especially if you're tracking it weekly. Because if you're tracking it weekly, you're not gonna have eight consecutive points reaching that goal unless you start achieving it in February. So with your projects, look at your SMART goal. And if your SMART goal is April or whenever it is, you need to start achieving that goal eight weeks before that. So you can start showing that you've actually changed the process by the time April comes. So in summary, what did we learn today? There's at least some variation in everything. Don't overreact to normal variation. That's what I was doing on the cattle drive, and that'll just tire you out and make you want to quit. When you express what your process is doing, express the mean and variation. Like we said before, currently we are at 20 minutes and our variation is plus or minus five minutes. Third point here, remember the two rules or the cowboy logic as mentioned before. If a point falls outside your process control limits, look into the reason and learn from it. And if there are eight consecutive points above or below the mean, the process has probably changed and you can change your process mean. So thanks for your attention today, everyone. Again, this is Jake Mickelson and this is the Radiology Improvement Team Education Program.